one of the podcast clips that I wanted to play for you guys and react to was from the 7 p.m. to Brooklyn pod. Shout out our guys, Mero and Carmelo Anthony. And this was a debate. They had Joe Button on the pod. This was a debate between these guys on should the Knicks keep Mitch or should they keep iHeart next year? Let's hear what these guys had to say. I'll play a little bit of it. They, they kind of rambled a little bit on, and then and then we'll get back to it. Here we go. Oh, let me. it would help if I unmute this. Here we go. If it's done low, I'm trying to see what I can get in return. There we go. On the right, GM, on, lead the league in block. Thank Mitch, you. you see? I'm go. seeing what the market is. If I can get him for the low, you get My fault. Let me, I, I was skipping around on, on the thing. I'm going to play it right now. Here is 7 p.m. to Brooklyn, uh, the Mitch versus iHeart debate. Here we go. Getting rid of, are you let, not getting rid of, are you letting Mitchell Robinson go to keep Hartenstein? I'm if tr- that's the scenario. If, if free agency, I'm seeing what the market is. If I can get him for the low, I'm getting him for the low. Get who for the low? Mitch. Oh, no, it's over for that. What? All right, so Merrill kind of stumbles here because Mitch is already signed to a deal. So the free agency part with Mitch doesn't really make sense. But all right, we'll keep going. Trade? Ain't no, ain't man, no lead the league in blocks. Man, ain't I mean, no low. Right, okay, what? so if, if it's still no low, if it's still low, I'm trying to see what I can get in return. On the GM tip, on the He's emotional the Knicks tip. blocker in the game, bro. Right, on the emotional Knicks tip, I don't want to see Mitch go. I know the Knicks are mad that they couldn't trade him before the day. That's a fact. It's a lot of, it's a lot of pieces. I got to disagree with Buttons as well right here. I don't think the Knicks are even trying to trade him at the deadline. They need that depth for the playoff. They need both of those guys, but we'll keep going. And, and Mitch's salary can, becomes way more important when they want a bigger trade if they're going to make that trade. So I thought Joe Buttons was off right there as well. This is a part of that yeah. that I'm sure that they wish things could have went differently. But with Mitchell, you got to really think about that. Right. Like the valuable, like his value of, of what he brings to the game. Now with a team, but what about the, the offensive with, game? Fuck the offensive game with the pieces. Family show, Mel. That show. the Knicks have now. Julius getting his shoulder right, getting his mind right. Right. Jalen getting healthy because it's a fucked up time to get injured. Family show, Mel. Right? Family show. Yeah. Yeah, Jalen, but it's a bullshit. good time because you getting All Star break and you, you know what right. I mean. So if it's a time to get injured, God's time right now. Right. Yeah. Get get healthy. Now you got OG, right at the three. You put Bogdanovich at the two. You put Jalen Brunson at the one. Your bench is Alec Burke coming off, Hartenstein yeah. coming Demon off. Dendro. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like You got pieces now. Josh Hart is coming yeah. off. You have pieces now. And, and your man, Taj. Uncle Taj is Uncle coming off. Uncle Taj is there. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, so, I mean, after that, they get into, like, this huge uh, – for the final, like, five minutes of this clip, they get into, like, a huge Taj Gibson thing, which to me was kind of pointless because Taj isn't helping this team worth a lick. But – and I don't think I don't think Melo really articulated why they should keep one or the other. I think he was just saying, well, they're playing well right now and they have the pieces. Merrill's whole thing about free agency on Mitch was was off as well. I think the debate becomes whose salary do they want to use or will they use in a trade? They're not keeping both. Someone in the in the chat. Someone in the chat was saying, why not keep both? You're not going to keep two centers on this team. Not at the way salaries are going up. We just talked about iHeart could, could be commanding anywhere between 16 to damn near 20 mil if he's looking for starter salary. And he might get that. Right? Could, could iHeart be potentially, could they put iHeart with San Antonio to kind of be a, 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 a bruiser to help Wemby? I don't know what OKC's uh, books are looking like, but is that a potential? as OKC looks for a potential enforcer next to Chet. Like, I could go out there and command some money on the open market. So for the Knicks, the question is, will they use Mitch's money in a deal to go get that bigger player and then sign iHeart, or do they try to utilize iHeart in some sort of signing trade where you don't lose them for nothing, you get assets back, and you could flip that in the trade. One of those guys is going to be gone. They're not keeping both. The future here does not include both Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartenstein. And then on top of the fact that Presses Achua is playing very well, it, it, it's a great problem to have, especially when Mitch, Mitch comes back for this playoff run because the Knicks front court it desperately needs reinforcements. But from a business standpoint, it becomes very interesting because take a look at Precious Achua's contract here. He's making, he's a restricted free agent for 2024. 
at six mil. Knicks pick pick up that qualifying offer. Now you got a backup center at six million dollars. And as you think about salary cap, apron, second apron, paying Brunson, paying OG, some of those like you're not going to pay two centers. You're not going to have thirty million dollars combined into into your primary and your backup center. You can't. You're not going to be able to survive that way. When the Knicks get to the point where they're going to have to pay a lot of people, it's going to get a little top-heavy. And on the bottom, you're going to need more manageable contracts, veteran minimums where you're getting big value, a.k.a. what Precious is doing. That's why what he's doing is so important for this team financially. And maybe you go back into the draft, or is it Sims? Or maybe you go back into the draft and you get a, a center as well. Mitch and iHeart are not going to coexist on this team with those two contracts. OG's going to get like 30. Brunson's going to get near 50. What's going to happen with Julius? Who, If they get Spider, Spider's at 30. Everybody's not going to be able to get paid. Everybody's not going to be able to get paid. Daytime Darius says, I differ, disagree. You can pay both. You can pay both, but is that the best use of your assets? When you think about having to pay the rest, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Show me in the league where you see that. Aggravated Mad says Mitch is always hurt and is a late game liability. I that could factor into things. Mitch's durability concerns. <laughs> <laughs> 